a lecture on electromagnetics, and I'm using part of my uh, uh, trash physics library of experiments. This one today is on a pretty neat product you probably recognize. This is an induction heating plate. You've probably seen these. Put a hot plate, put a pan on here, um, turn it on, and it heats it up almost instantaneously. I'm going to take this apart, and we're going to take a look and see what's going on here. How does this work? And then I'm going to run some experiments that I'm sure I, I'll probably be willing to bet you've never seen before. And just to show you and demonstrate the phenomenon here, this was developed, this was discovered by Michael Faraday in 1831. It's the phenomenon of electromagnetic induction. And uh, it's just, it's just electromagnetic du induction in its most beautiful, simplest form. So I'm going to take this apart. We're going to look and see, look inside this, and see exactly, exactly what's here. So I just pull the cap, the top off. Notice right away some some small paste here. <clears throat> this is a, it's a thermal paste. It's designed to thermally couple, thermally connect the plate surface, which is made of glass, and this little sensor down here. If you guys look in close here, you'll see what you'll notice here is now a coil, just like we talked about, our standard coil uh, with, with X number of windings. It's in a plane, so the difference between this and let's say a transformer is that these coils are wrapped all in the same, in the same cylindrical plane, whereas these are wrapped in a, in a, in a, in a uh, geometric plane, a, a, a Euclidean plane. So it's a flat plane versus a cylindrical plane. And the difference is, this is going to focus the electromagnetic field better than this one. This is going to spread it out. And they want it to spread out. They want it to spread out by design. Now, here's what basically how this works. You plug it in, you turn it on, and, and, and three things happen. The first thing that happens is, these magnets, you'll see magnets placed around the periphery of this plate. These are all magnets. And these are magnets in here. So the first thing that's going to happen is those magnets are going to magnetize a magnetic material that's sitting on top of the glass. That, that has to happen. And when it does that, there's this little sensor here in the middle is a little magnetic sensor. It's going to detect if that pan or whatever material you put on here is in fact magnetic. And it'll detect it based on the field that these create through that metal. If it does not detect that, this will not turn on. No, so number one, you've got to detect a magnetic material. Uh, in fact, as you'll see in a minute, it continuously checks every about once a second to make sure that it's still on there. It doesn't just check one time and then turn off. It's constantly checking always, making sure there's something on there to heat up and something that will actually conduct through the uh, magnetic field. Another little sensor here is right there. You can see it connected around that paste. That's actually a little, a little diode. That's nothing but a little, a little diode. I may, in fact, have a, um, I may actually have one here. Let's see, I have a little box in here somewhere. Oh, here there. That's just a little diode. It looks just like one of these. That's all it is. That's literally all it is. It's a little diode. We talked about these. It's a little PN junction. And what that does is, oh wait, is that the right diode? I'm going to show you the wrong part. I'm sorry. I showed you the wrong part. I showed you a, uh, I, I pulled from the wrong pack. My bad. I think Ruben caught that, didn't he? <laughs> There's a diode. Okay. There's a glass diode. There's your diode. That's what's in there. This has a PN junction, which is, which is temperature sensitive. The equation is thermally, it's temperature sensitive. So through the equation, we can detect heat and we can detect it fairly accurately, what this will do, this will tell you how hot the plate is actually getting. So, you now have the ability to turn the coil on, making sure something's on there to heat up, and then constantly measure whether it's there, and while at the same time, measuring the temperature. That's all you need. And if those conditions are met, the plate will stay on and it'll heat up. So let's see how this thing works. I'm gonna put the plate right back on. It's gonna make a connection just like it did. Snaps in place, I think, like this. Let's see here. There we go. Okay. 
Okay. And then it's got some screws to put in the bottom, but we don't need those to make it work, so let's just, let's just see it work. So all we have to do is plug it in. And you heard it come to life. You heard the little beep? Lights are on. And let's heat up something. I'm going to heat my hand up. Let's cook my hand and see how hot I can get it. The way you do that is you turn it on and you give it a temperature. Bring the camera over here. You can see you actually watch the temperature. I'm going to dial in 400 degrees Fahrenheit and watch my hand cook. 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And my hand's cooking. We're going to have roast, roast hand in just a second. Oh, but wait. It turned off. Did you hear the, did you hear the beeps? Yes. The beeps are looking for a metal, like a magnetically conductive material. We'll try it again. Let's go to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Listen to the constant beeps. It's checking, checking, checking. Those are beeps looking for metal. It doesn't detect metal, so it ignores it and shuts off. It needs metal. It needs a, a magnetically conductive metal. And it can be anything. So I built my own little piece of metal just to fake it out and make it think it's a pot. This is just a piece of, uh, piece of iron. Bent. It's actually a piece of tin ceiling. Um, a, a tin ceiling which is tin coated metal, tin coated iron. And I'll put this on the top. I'll, I'll basically, I have to satisfy two requirements. One is I have to have it over the magnets and B, I have to have it in the center so it can detect those magnets. And then we'll see if it comes on. I'm going to run it to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and watch what happens here. You hear the fan come on? That, that means it's on. It's cooking that, and in a minute this will start smoking. It's, it's getting hot. Uh, you'll actually begin to feel the heat now radiating. Don't touch it, just get close to it. Get close. You can, you can feel the heat now radiating from that. It's going to cook it, it's going to heat it to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay? What is a multi iron? Oh gosh, it's okay. I don't know what it is. Pretty high, though, much higher than much higher than 400. I mean, solder melts at like 600, or 500, and maybe 400. I mean, we could probably melt solder. In fact, we did. I, that solder you see there, solder, solder uh, pad. But so this is what's happening. This is heating up now, and it's getting very, very hot. In fact, you could probably boil water on this thing now. And indeed, we do. The cool thing about it is the plate's not getting hot. It's literally just, just the metal. And if the plate gets hot, it's because of the metal. But the plate directly isn't heating up. In fact, you see the water there, it's not even, it's not even boiled. But if I touch that water with this plate, you can see where the, where the heat's going. It's purely on the metal. Now, let's take a look. Can, can we see what that, with that magnetic, now watch what happens when I take this off. It's going to be hunting for metal. It's not going to find it, so it'll shut down. See it here hunting? It's hunting. It can't find metal, so it's going to shut off. There, it's off. Okay, so it's doing its job. But I'm curious. Let's take a look and see exactly where that, where that magnetic field where does it look like? Where is it, where is it coming from? Is it round? Is it square? Is it, is it dots? Well, take a piece of metal, same piece of iron. Let's place it on top as long as it satisfies the requirements of being magnetic and, and meeting the requirements of being heated, which the diode will detect, it should turn on. But what's going to happen is if it gets hot enough in certain places, the metal is going to oxidize with the air and you're going to see an immediate reaction. It's a chemical reaction of what you're about to see. All right, let's see it. I'm going to turn, on, turn it on. I'm going to run it up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. There. Now let's watch what happens. And now it's heating. All right, stand on. You hear it? It's going to be hunting. Yes, it's definitely. Look at look, there's the, there's the field. There's the magnetic field. That's, what, that's why they spread the coils out, to make it wide and take up as much surface area on the bottom of the pot or pan as possible. And again, which is why I have these pins coming up to pull it around. This is probably going to boil water. Turn it in the sink. 
Now, I don't know about you, but if I was on Mars and I would have to put something, I would like to do something like this, where I wouldn't need gas or wood or materials, basically something that just allowed me to create a magnetic field. And this magnetic field, by the way, being created there is causing this right here, is oscillating at about 40,000 times a second. And it's creating that deliberately in order to couple onto the material. Now, this is obviously getting very hot. You can put your hand on this and feel a tremendous amount of heat that this is, uh, that this is giving off. Feel that? I mean, that's, and it's still cooking. It's still getting hot. So I'm going to turn it off. In fact, I'm going to turn, let it turn itself off. Now, it's, it's hunting. You hear it hunting. Now, this plate might be warm only because this made it warm. Be careful you don't burn yourself. It might be a little warm. Actually, it's not too bad. Not even, it's cold out here. Okay? All right. I'm going to put this over here out of the way. Let it cool. So, what are we seeing here? What, is it, what exactly is happening? Well, the coil you saw is containing a, 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 a rapidly changing field, which is creating a magnetic field that's coming up this way. And what did I tell you about it, its ability to, to um, couple Onto, onto other coils that can, that can pick up that magnetic field. It, it's doing exactly that. But what if I put a coil on here? If I put a coil on here, according to, according to Faraday's law, it should couple onto that coil. And I could hold the coil in my hand and have it couple because it's just a magnetic field, right? Well, let's try that. First of all, I'm going to turn this off. Put my metal back on here because I, you have to turn it on. And then let's try something really cool. Watch this. I'm going to turn this on. In fact, um, let me go grab the lights. So, yeah, you'll be, you'll be, able, you'll be all right. It's going to start, but you'll be able to see in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to turn it on low, just kind of low, to 102, let's say 203 degrees. And then I'm going to take a, a coil with a little LED on it and see if it'll, in fact, turn on. This is a transformer that I've, that I've done nothing more than solder a little LED to. And let's see what happens to it. And it's actually, it actually turns on. While it's hit, it's hunting. It's doing all the things it was doing. It's hunting for the for the metal. If I take the metal off, see when it goes off, it's hunting. Let me raise the temperature because now it's it's meeting its temperature requirements, so it's shutting off. But I want to keep it on. So there is a transformer. I've done nothing but solder an LED to it. That's all I've done. And then I got thinking, well, how many of those can I put on here? I got another one. And these are literally you could pick this up. It's, it's being magnetically coupled. They're magnetically coupled from the field. That's how they're turning on. And in fact, you can, you can grow this to as big as you want. In fact, I'm gonna take this so you guys can see it over there. I'm gonna move this to the other side. And move these over here. You can see all the LEDs. In fact, you can even stack them. It should still come on, yeah, barely. And you can keep doing this indefinitely because you're doing nothing but coupling a magnetic field with the coils from, from the transformer. literally all we're doing we're coupling look at that we're just coupling it's, I mean look at that it's, it's 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 exactly what Tesla had had proposed in terms of uh, how to use this to, to turn on remote systems so the question now becomes well these are all coils wrapped with many many hundreds of turns how few turns do you actually need to turn an LED on I mean according to according to Faraday's law you don't need many maybe, maybe you need one well, let's see. Let's take a, just a couple of coils. That's all it is, is a couple of coils and an LED. That's all it is. Nothing, nothing but a couple of coils, a couple of turns, 
and an LED, and let's see if we can make this thing come on. There it is. It's the blue one there. Came on. So this is this is really the most beautiful example I've ever seen of magnetic induction. And the really cool thing about it, uh, I was tempted one day as I was doing this, thinking to myself, "Gosh, you know what you could do is, you know, let's let's heat up this water." And then I thought, "Oh wait, the water's not going to get hot. Why won't it get hot? Because there's no metal. There's no metal." But then I thought, well, what happens if I put metal in it? And you can see it's actually coming on. Still going to work. Absolutely. There it is. The light still comes on. And again, why not heat, heat the water from within using just a piece of metal that it conducts? And that's exactly what we're doing. You're heating, you're, we're, we're literally turning on the LED in the water while we're heating the water. It may not heat it rapidly, but you get the idea, you get the point. Wait, are the transformers heating up? They might be heating up slightly, and I'm betting if they are, it's because the plate's getting hot from this thing heating the plate. But that's a great question. That's a great question, uh, Daniel. Why aren't, the, why aren't the transformers getting hot? And there's a specific reason for that, because they're laminated. The reason why transformers don't get hot when you turn them on, they would get this hot if they, if they weren't laminated. They're actually layered, and those layers prevent what we call the eddy currents. The eddy currents are what's causing this to heat up. Wait, but then how is the water going to heat up if the transformers Well, good, good point. It would have to obviously be something without the... Uh, that's what's preventing the water from heating up, is the laminates, as a matter of fact. That's a great question. To be, to be absolutely precise and accurate, that's exactly what's happening. So there you go. There you, there you see an a absolute beautiful example of, um, of Faraday's law. And again, if I heat this up, I can take this thing up to 400 degrees. And it's just going to sit there until it meets 400 degrees, which it may never do, because I'm deliberately, by having these fins point up, Actually, it's hunting. Why is it hunting? It's like I can't find it. That's weird. Okay, there it went. I may have had the, the setting wrong. Um, I have the fins pointing up to literally, to deliberately dissipate the heat. I, I want it to dissipate the heat. But otherwise, you wouldn't need to do that with a pan. And that's why a pan would heat up, and that's how you cook things. And so that's my demonstration uh, for electromagnetics. I had some other things I wanted to show you about electric motors and AC motors, DC motors, but this is, a, I think, a very impressive demonstration. Uh, that coupled with Lenz's law uh, in, the, uh, in the copper tube, and this gives you a, really a great, a great sense of, um, of what goes on. All right. Well, that concludes the experiment. Um, Hope you enjoyed it on Facebook, and uh, be sure to check out my website. You know, we'll have this video posted uh, within the next 24 hours. So long.